If we talk, now 500,000 they go summer us, call them hate speech. But fear not, my ego don't come. In go touch light every corner, nooks and cranny of all these bad, bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make me laugh. Oh, yeah. Every corner. Okay, some people be they hala say they want the power. Chai. Them be promise us say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day dollar just they get the higher power. Over naira. See them talk say make we off mind. But then go say my ego don't come. So my people make you loud. Like oh, yeah, yeah. They do even no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man too they talk. He too they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day then they take money in buck. One man picking they the street they hawk. See them talk say make we no talk. But thank God say my egun don't come. So my people make you laugh. Like oh yeah yeah, my egun don't come. Oh yeah yeah, my people make you shout. Oh, Yo Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining me from. It is Mayegu live. <laughs> Read the caption of this broadcast. The description, a very long and detailed one, by the way. Share the broadcast. Invite your friends, invite your not so friendly friends, and tell them that Mayegu Tideu. <laughs> I would promise that uh, I do come with uh, a bag of uh, goodies all to save all tonight. All you have to do is hear the broadcast. Invite your friends and not so friendly friends as advised. <laughs> Sounds like or sounded like uh, a joke, but it is not a joke. How to react to this? 
is sort of a mixed. But I'll leave that to you. Thank you, thank you. Far too kind. As you are joining, sharing. I guess we are starting now. My So what today? Now, good morning to you once again. Good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining us from, or wherever you are watching from. It is my live for those who are watching it live. It won't really matter even if you are watching it as a replay. But here is the rider. There is this video that popped out yesterday. And it sort of uh, thrown so many of us off balance because the purpose of, uh, or let me say the title of uh, the video was that for the first time, the farmers in southern Nigeria, especially in Yoruba land, they, will, they would have peace now because some farmers have signed a peace deal with Miyetiala. Mixed feelings, right? So a lot of us started digging. Like, what the hell? What was this? What's this all about? So many questions that even up till now, unanswered. But what we finally figured out, what I found out is that this is just a mere performatory show that is that lacks absolute. Uh, no uh, binding or any power or whatever behind it. It's just performatory. So, Adimiyetiala, because according to them, they are like the others and the farmers. You know the rhetoric, I mean, the, sorry, the, the story of uh, APC, Egbekegbe, the Bokuaris gang, Layamo and others. When this terrorism started, was that those who were killing our farmers, our people, on their farms, they were not Nigerians. They were from Mali, Ninja, Chad, and all these places. Then they started asking us to give them land if we wanted peace. This was the condition given by the government of Nigeria to Yorubas, here to all of us, anyway, the entire south uh, of Nigeria. So this has been a boon of contention for a while, to the point that when the media says farmers others clashes, that means two people clashed, Abi, and maybe if uh, there are casualties, dead bodies, I mean dead bodies. It should be on both sides. Any kind of fight that will lead to the death of one, it should also leave some unimaginable damages on the other, Abby. How could the farmers and others be clashing on the farmer's farm? So if there is anyone that need peace eh? to sign a peace and say we are living and we will never 
perpetuate this act of terrorism on you anymore. It should be the Fulani terrorists, not the Miyeti Allah, fronting for them. And they are still projecting farmers' others clashes. So to bring peace, the Yoruba farmers who organized themselves in Ibadan decided to call it the South, the, the Southwest, the Southeast, the South South. Meanwhile, it is mere APC, a performatory show. I'll show you. First, the video. Um, according to this lady, this is the greatest thing ever, like, like that. Listen. History is being made in Nigeria. The Farmers Association is south south of Nigeria, southwest. They are meeting with the entire Meiti Allah, the pastoral farmers, and signing a communicate that will be communicated to the president. And that way, there can be peace. They say, no farmers, no Nigeria. But great farmers, great nation. I am so proud to be here today. An accident that has come to be a blessing. I would love to have you. Okay, ma. Nigeria, here is our chance to peace, reconciliation, and communal living. Just watch this. See the crowd. You can't fake this. See the crowd. Like across the entire South South, all farmers present in the house. So you see how propaganda does work. It's this. Inside that room, supposedly, were to be the victims of Fulani terrorism. Those who lost their farms or lost uh, their lives and their family that survived them. Possibly one or two or so will be in that uh, all. Then the Fulanese, they were supposed to be the perpetrators of this. They too represented by the Miyeti Allah. And a Yoruba lady was so proud. History has been made. Oh my God. The Fulanese have signed a peace deal with us. They have promised that. Our farmers can go to farms now. Our farmers can, you know, there will be no issue anymore. There is a peace deal now. Is that actually a joke? That was my first reaction. Like, is this a joke? Until I saw this. I'm going to read out the agreement. Very simple. Very, very simple. Artigos or Benua are meeting us, so we have discussed this. Coordinators, sir, we have discussed this. Your Excellency, we have done that. So, mark a very simple test. D, our mentor, to move our sign. This is to affirm that farmers and cattle herders in southwest zone of Nigeria have agreed to work together and in harmony for the benefit of both parties and Nigeria in general. Yes. Great farmers, yes. sign this day, fourth day, 18th April 2024. for Southwest Commodities Farmers Organization. Baba National President. Mayati Allah Katu Breeders Association of Nigeria, Magba, and His Excellency, Kemi Onobu, uh, that the witness is Royal Highness Senator Adewodu Ladoja. Thank you so much.
Yes. La Georgia. I mean, I don't know how uh, this lady in their typical fraudulent propaganda or so way. I don't know why she's out to drag south, south, southwest, southeast into it. It is these guys who have been victims. Listen to this. Oh, let's just say, or your state farmers who are Yorubas, or your state farmers, the part of Yoruba land that you can call the northern part of Yoruba land, okay, has been under the endless attacks of uh, the Fulani terroristy, purported to be Fulani ads men. I mean, artsmen are the ones that will lead their cows onto your farms, okay? But you see the terrorists that are kidnapping people, hmm? raping women, old women, on their way to the stream, market, and farms, collecting ransoms, kidnapping, you know, a people for ransom. Those ones walk about with AK-47, wrecking havoc as well. You see those ones with cows, they also walk about with their AK-47. If they ransack your farms and you try to push back, they will pull gun on you. You will be lucky if they don't kill you, but you will watch them destroy your entire farm. Or your state has suffered greatly. You know? Out of all the farm settlement that Obafemi Awulowo, Chief Obafemi Awulowo, established across Yoruba land, across the, the western region of old, there is the biggest of them, and some of them that, I mean, one of the most, I mean, sorry, one of the surviving among others is the one in your states. And a lot of you have been hearing about uh, the terrorism of uh, Ibarapa, Ayete, Igogo, uh, and, you know, all those areas, they are northern part of all your states. These are areas where you will see farm, you know, farm settlements. Eh? These are not just farms that you just be like, okay, I'm going to farms. No, 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 no. We call them farm settlements. People live on them. They live on those, I mean, on those farms. Massive extra, I mean, expanse of land that have already been occupied by the armed Fulani terroristy. Majority of the places have been claimed by them. Like, this is our own. That's your own there. This is ours. So all this happening. Now, if uh, Ladoja, the future Ulubadon of Ibadan, is bearing witness, we are victims on their own land. Victims of uh, Fulani terrorism are happy to come and sign a piece of paper. When did Fulani started there? Uh, Sort of honoring agreement. When I remember when uh, Devulumai was crying, when uh, f you know some villages, in fact about three local government areas in a Bonyi state were ransacked by Fulani terrorists, and they killed and killed and killed until they couldn't hide it. And he went there, and he was like, but. I had an agreement with their leaders. We had an agreement. We had uh, this or that, but we've now realized that majority of the of them that actually live here, eh, majority of them, they are aware of the attacks. And before the attacks takes place, right, they will all just move away. Like two, three days before those attacks will take place, all the full and is known in the area, they will all move away. Until after the attacks, Umayi said it. Go on channels, uh, television, YouTube channels, okay? Type in Umayi and Fulani killings in Ebony. You will see that video there. He was pleading with uh, the people of those communities that uh, this wasn't the, uh, the agreement. In Anambra states, Obaino actually made three of them. Uh, three Fulani from this Miyetiala as members of uh, his own cabinet, as advisors, advisors to him. That never 
stop them from uh, you know wrecking our work whenever opportunity presented itself. So piece of paper that ordinarily is not binding, okay, is what this character, this group of people are showing that finally history has been made. Pulanis has promised us that they won't kill our farmers anymore. How great is that? Wow. Wow. No wonder she is so happy. In Yoruba land, not the Yorubas in Shokoto, not Yoruba farmers in Kebio. Yoruba farmers in Yoruba land, they are, I mean, a group of people are so happy that they are murderers, they are killers. I finally agreed not to kill them anymore. I want to show you something. Take a look at the face of this uh, guy that's, that I believe is uh, representing the Mietziala. The one that this uh, guy was first asked, Abi, we have agreed, Abi. Have we agreed? And he was like, yeah, yes, we agreed. Look at his face first. I'm going to read out the agreement. Very simple. Very, very simple. Artichokes or Benua are being seen also. We have discussed this. Coordinators, we have discussed this. You are saying. New Zans, Lily. Abi, 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 we have discussed it. Abi, Ati, agree. And the power more, you will not kill us again. Yeah. Coordinator, Ati agree. Have we agreed? And then our sister was so happy because history has been made. They have agreed not to kill us anymore. History is being made in Nigeria. The Farmers Association is south south of Nigeria, southwest. They are meeting with the entire Meiti Allah the pastoral farmers and signing a communicate that will be communicated to the president and that way there can be peace they say no farmers no nigeria but great farmers great nation i am so proud to be here today an accident that has come to be a blessing i would love to have you okay ma nigeria here is our chance to peace reconciliation Communal living. Peace, reconciliation, and communal living. With who? Nigeria has over Nigeria have over 250 ethnic nationalities that comprises over 500 to 600 tribes that speaks similar language, over 600 languages. But one of them, Fulani, that speak one language, Fufude, is the one we have to sign a peace agreement with before we can actually farm on our land. Are you being serious? Meanwhile, an average Fulani, this is how they see it. Before I start, I may like to ask you guys to save this video because... I know some of you guys, or many of Biafran, they are illiterate. They are not well educated. Save this video, run to your neighbor, and ask them or try, ask them to translate it to you guys. I swear, I swear to Almighty God, even you people have separated your nation, mean Biafra. You must see Fulani in your land. You must. That one is composite. Fulani is either you separate this land, you separate your own Biafra, or life Fulani must go there. Compositing. Planets are not your mate. We are not your mate. We are not your mate. Planets are not your problem. Why are you why are you so are you so you 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 guys like you are out of your sense? Planets are not your problem. You are fighting with the government and still now you are still fighting with the flani. <laughs> they play. You guys are wasting your time. Oh. Allah, I swear to Almighty God, even you people spread this nation. You must see flani in your land by Afra. You must see flani. I swear to God. This is what I promise. That's the delusion that they actually work with. About to be honest, too, if they have to leave everybody one on one, no, no government bias and all of that. Pulani can actually like I'm. I am okay. In order not to sound like 
this is something I would like to see happen. No, that's not something I want to see. That's not the way I want things to be. But if it becomes something like a man to man, but let's be honest now. Everybody is allowed to actually like, oh yeah, do whatever you can to defend yourself, Baba. We can actually kill that illusion. See, listen, oh, don't get me wrong. Oh. Eh? For time in memoria, the Fulanis, eh? they, they see themselves somehow eh? as fighters. You know, fighters who are ready to die. And somehow, you know, they're kind of a right. They are right. But they are not always there. They are not totally right. Because even you, that you call yourself a terrorist, eh? who can kill anything, you are brutal. When death, when you face death face to face, you will shit your body. Do you understand what I mean? The terrorist that is bragging because he's allowed to carry that massive weapon, do all of that, no, no, no consequences. And it has happened again and again and again, no consequences. But from what we have heard, in few places where these marauders, this this uh, ragtag Islamic uh, Fulani terrorist, where people have actually responded fire. Most of the time, they always have to run away. The operation gets aborted. If they get to a community, they have an idea before they attack the community. They don't attack any community during the day. They attack them very early in the morning or dead in the night when they can easily eh, start burning people's homes and you know, when the civilians are running out here and there, eh, they can start eh, butchering them and macheting them. Meanwhile, during the day or maybe during the week, they've surveyed the entire community. They know the homes or the houses where men are and where people have weapons. So all of these are done in the cover of the night. And this is what cowards do. If you re and the moment the people want to go after them, eh? because people usually know where they come from. The moment the, the affected community wants to go after them, the Nigerian military will move in and they will start arresting the, the youth of that community. And according to them, it is to douse the tension and let the government and let the uh, security agents do their job. So average Fulani, who also has his, uh, uh, what do you call it, they have his 100% uh, support for these lunatics. The ones that will easily gaslight you and say, it's, your, it's because you hate Fulani. I do not hate Fulanis, because I have no reason to hate you. But without having to use the word hate, I will spend my penny eh, to pay and sponsor those that will use every of their training to neutralize a terrorist Fulani, a Fulani terrorist, because there are Fulani terrorists. In the end, like I said, out of 250 ethnic nationalities in Nigeria, only one of them that joined this space in 1807, the Fulanis, have been the one terrorizing the 99% of the entire country. Maybe that's an exaggeration. 100% of the entire country, you will see their fingers there. So if they, if a, uh, an average Fulani, the one that is not, uh, the one that is uh, holding gone, has the mindset of, it's nothing all of you can do, whether you like it or not, uh, you will have Fulani in your country. You will have Fulani in this. So, no, 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 we won't, my dear. We won't. No, we won't. And if you are too young to know a lot of things in the past until Bokwari came, they're not born well. 
all this madness, all these negotiations, all these things, all these conditions, they were never in existence before Bokwari came. Fulani is sitting down. Miyetiala asking, who be Miyetiala? But this is what APC has created. This is their creation. Before Bokwari, who be Fulani in any part of Yoruba land or any part of southern Nigeria? Talk less of them even having the audacity eh, to come and give conditions to people they the people that are the indigenous people of the, the people that are supposed to be their hosts, he started giving them conditions or you kill them. So we can actually quickly cure a lot of them. Where see when Nigeria breaks, eh? We will cure a lot of things from the mindset of uh, the descendants of Putman Dampodio. Okay, there will be a lot of things to cure. If they born you well, you did it in Ghana. Like I said, if you are too young to probably remember some of uh, before, at least recently, even under Bokwari, you tried it in Ghana. You, your gun, your cows, they are now being used as memes on social media. Huh? Some of the videos made from making from the uh, barbecues that they used your cows for in Ghana. It was a single declaration, and it, this declaration wasn't even coming from the politician. It came straight from the police IG in, in Ghana. If you see any cow, we have heard that uh, some of them are crossing through so, 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 and so region of Ghana. If you see them, any one of them, eh, kill them. If any of uh, those uh, guys who are like uh, leading them try to kind of fight you back, kill them too. It was another. And before you know it, eh? You no go hear about this full madness in Ghana. You attempted it. That's how you will never hear it in Biafra ever. In your dream, cross border, pull up, kuni, cross border, go and die. And at that time, there will be no soldiers to go and stop at the. Okay, you are crossing to another person's space. That's why it is. And that is why when they said that uh, they announced that they wanted to to crown an emir. A full, maybe in a full near me, or maybe in a USA, this, I don't know. In a those states. So he got to the notice of uh, the Oba of Bini and the Oba in council there. And they just told them, like, listen, if you try that nonsense here, if you dare, hmm, every one of you, in this space, eh? We vacated this space. I mean, like, this is the reality now. A lot of them might still be glossing over the one Nigeria, one Nigeria. The situation is that a lot of them are no longer, nobody trusts anybody anymore. And like we told you, Nigeria, as they know, is sitting on a keg of gunpowder. Eh? That could explode anytime. So they had to make a video. KBS, you know, that's no, we, we are very sorry. Oh. I don't understand that. Usa, maybe you do. My name is Gandima. I want this leader to bear my papa or my number to pass the order the order of the day for what he had just said yesterday. Yesterday, that day, that news will have been coming. Say, the news we are voting for 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 the leader, and I'm not aware. I don't know if I'm under pressure. And no, okay, someone that is where our name for the name. I don't know who that is. I know stupid things like that. Now, building the bombing. Now, building the bomb of a bar and the gamba. Building the bombing. I know the tradition of this state. Who will be, who will our, our safety say, this much we want to be? Now, to be able to assist the population outside of the name. Is anything where come out, I will devote the assistance. I don't know how this is happening. I used to go and beg my papa. We came when my papa did a picture of the picture. I beg, please, I'm talking. Hey, forgive me. Oh, but I beg, hey. I beg, my papa, forgive me. I'm the son of Bini. Now, Bini, they bomb me. Now, Bini, I grow. The ancestors of Ezo State, Bini, it's good for my body, for my family body, it's good for all I have body. As I heard that thing yesterday, I know still. Who be me? Who be me for me? When I say I want to go palace, 
I beg the good people of Edo State, everybody, they forgive me. My papa, the good girl, when they live with the friends of the king, I be of the king. I know what stupid wish who to do that for me. I beg my papa, at least God beg me, let him forgive me. All my time, my age. Yes, sir. My papa, I beg you. He say, Oba talk by eh. He say, eh, they no bomb me. Oh, bomb my papa. Oh, bomb my mama. Eh, when I heard that yesterday, I know you know the point here is this, right? They were contemplating of uh, making somebody emir of Benin. I be, I don't know. Aousas don't have emirs now. No, I be Aousas. What is the title of the Aousa king? Ariel, Aousa, Ar I mean, sorry. I don't know. So that got to the Bene people. You know, Bene people, they're, they're not a joke with that, their mm -hmm. tradition and then uh, they are all bow. Whatever you like, you can stay. Whatever you feel like, you can stalk. And listen to me. They are ready and willing to go physical. Especially where their sentiment about their tradition, their I mean their traditional uh, sorry their royal uh, stool comes to conversation. You see that is why sometimes when I want to talk about the Bene and Bene people and the rest of them, I kind of you know sort of respect that space. Okay, it's just that the one they don't like me saying is that uh, when Bene people tell you, let me tell you something. About Bene can never can never leave the palace. And go and see any politicians see picture. Yeah, but that one is that one is not the same thing. So they don't like they don't they don't I mean they don't really like me saying that. So that's why I don't talk about the Oba. So if you try anything to challenge the Aoba, forget about jazz or anything. For, they will go physical with you. And if you turn to any if you turn to Wahala, and in fact they are already threatening Wahala. If they burn you, eh, then burn now. Well, yeah, go do your Arewa Emir crowning and all of that here. I think that now got to the others in council, Oba in council, and they send a message like, "If you dare, don't try that here. Don't don't try it here. This is different from any other part of Nigeria." And those guys start to make videos and say, "Oba, okay. what do you concern us with them? No, 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 no. We're only just." Uh, we're only imagining it. No, we have no plan. No. Oh, these guys have already like appointed the appointed the guy that was going to be crowned. All right, they've already printed the uh, invitation. There was already a flyer online and all that. For here, try on. You know, go apologize. Okay? <laughs> That's the name. Awu Awu Sarawa Opini. That will be the name of the like a traditional king. And it's just because you see everybody no trust anybody anymore. Like you cannot do yourself. You can't, you shouldn't get caught in the web. Papa Lasson or the victim. Like you turn to victim straight in here. The Fulanis that are signing peace deal with the Yoruba farmers. The peace deal of a piece and paper. Piece of paper. That same Fulani is somewhere in Bauchi. Lere, local government of Bauchi, they were negotiating on how to buy guns from undercover policemen. You may not understand that, Usa. Eh? I mean, Fufude, whatever. See, look at one of them here. He's already caught, but he's calm. It's like, I just won't buy a gun. What do you want to use the gun for? Where do you need all the guns if we sell you the gun? Or oh, we are taking them to Mangu. Mangu. In plateau states, that's why he said, "You can't make this deal with terrorists. How can you?" Bullets. Now the bullet. I 
da mutanen ku ko da mutanen mango da mutanen mu na mango na ba mhm mutanen ku da aka ce mutanen mu na mango wato dukan su ne suka tambaye ka saboda ka ce su sun tambaye ka sun tambaye ka su waye ke ma a wakilci suka wakilci babaji ne suka wakilci okay babaji ne kira ni wato shi babaji ne kai dai ka sani sakan da Allah babaji ne mun gudana ne ba wanda ya mun gudana ne shi shi kuma ya baka kudin nan shi ya bari kudin No 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 amma ci amanar lere ka san dai lere wajen da kake zama ka san da ake fara fama da kalubale na tsaro wanda ana ta kokarin wannan yankin a ga an zauna lafiya to yanzu kasancewan ka shugaban fulani shugaban mai yanci Allah ka zo yanzu a ce kai ka zo sayan ammunition za ka kai wa fulani ko kuma kowane irin mutum menene wannan fasara ina zuwa ai mu ba mu magana ba ai ba mu magana mango tunda ba mango kake ba idan Nigeria is so corrupt which I I regret the I was born in this country it's unfair this is unfair now he's calm there is no blood dripping from his body he was there to negotiate for gun and he got caught and he was like okay yeah okay where did you get this money from oh it's money for from my my other people okay so what do you want to use the the guns for and the ammunition so i'm taking it to other fulanis who are currently in the in the camp in uh, mangu because uh, you know that's what they are chatting about if you hear any other thing please tell my viewers you don't negotiate with a terrorist it's an ideology they may they may look so dark and kind of a grievous to you like how could people be like that how can they be oh this is so bad that is to you it is not that bad i mean the more horrible it feels to you the more gracious it is for them yeah we unleash our pains on them now they are ready to talk your land or your life <gasps> our land our land please take our land that's why it's going to end it campaign of terror campaign of fear and then you have some people who are who put on uh, the best of their wares and said we are signing a peace deal with a terrorist inside Nigeria me here they're not signing on anybody's behalf but themselves and whoever are those who are behind them too should tell themselves that nobody is deceived some might uh, some people might, might have enjoyed the uh, the, perform I mean, the performance but nobody is deceived I am not. I don't know about you. But I'm not deceived. So the people of Okwama in the Delta states, they have now sued the Nigerian army. According to them, the damages done, the lives lost and all of that deserves some compensation and reprimand. These guys should be reprimanded. Those responsible for this carnage should be punished. And when all that are done, a 200 billion era suit is now against the Nigerian army. Let me show you the Okwama before and after and see what the Nigerian army did to the people of Okwama who are supposed to be Nigerians in their crossfire with uh, supposed oil bunkers. Lives were lost, properties were destroyed. A beautiful community, to some extent, have been left in the rumbles, like to just mere rubble. I mean, rumbles or so. Rumbles. Let's go to Kwamama. I'll show you.
Uh, my name is Austin. I want to retreat my statement earlier on that we can. The entire community gone. So that gives you the idea of what they did in Okwama before they finally allowed the people to come and access the place. By the time the media got there, there was no single soul left in the entire community. You saw it from the above, and you saw it uh, close, Abi. That's what Nigerian Army did from the 15th of March when they said 17 soldiers were killed by the people of Okwama. Until the later said, is, I mean, these soldiers were killed by some militants who were doing oil bunkery. But the community is gone. Lives lost. And Nigeria is not at war. Let's go a little bit further. This time around, let's stay a little bit in that Niger Delta. Post. The, the committee called the Senate Committee or something, Sha, they visited Port Harcourt. So go and take a look at uh, the Port Harcourt refinery. The one that you shared the video, yes, you, the one you joined them to share the video in December. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. In December, Port Harcourt refinery back to life dangote refinery begins operation december 2023 this is april 2024 and these guys went there and they still continue to lie to you you know what they say well they said the refinery will not start work until towards the end of the year no specific time well, yeah, let's stop there and probably share that. Listen. Members of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on the Turnaround Maintenance of Nigerian Refineries are in River State. They've come to assess the level of work and preparedness of the two Port Harcourt refineries. The old refinery was built in 1965, while the second refinery was built 23 years later in 1989. Like the other refineries in Wari and Kaduna, the two refineries that make up the Potaka refinery have been dormant for a long time and unable to meet the energy needs of the country, even after billions of dollars have been spent by successive governments to revive them. The security and economic consequences are that the country has been forced to rely on importation to meet its energy needs. We have a resolution in the Senate to look and make sure that Nigerian refineries are working so that we shouldn't be depending on importation of petroleum products. And that is one of the reasons why we are here and as well to look into the contract. This is not the first time hopes will be raised about the refineries coming back to life. But the chairman of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee, Ifan Yuba, wants Nigerians to discard their doubts. What we saw is most encouraging as the refinery upgrade and full rehabilitation is almost at 90% completed. We are confident that the refinery will soon be operational before the end of the year. When operation of the refinery starts, the issue of importation will go down. We will now make our own efforts. Economy will grow. Internal revenue will increase. 
more projects will be executed in states. Governor Sinfobara says his administration is already complementing the efforts of the federal government with the construction of an alternative road to the Potakot refinery. It will help to decongest the trouble commuters face along the East West Road and easy access straight to the refinery. So you can see our government is working in line, supporting the administration of President Tenebo to give our people hope. While commending the Nigerian Senate for its bold initiative, Governor Fubara is, however, not happy with the effort made by a member of the committee and senator representing River Southeast Senatorial District to discourage members of the committee from paying him a visit. This is. That is if the Olokpas are working. So that's how they play people, right? That's, you know, we believe the refinery is now 90% working, ready. So 90% and it's going to begin operation before the end of the year, before. Anyway, let's stay a little bit in the uh, reverse because this one seems to be a funny one to me. Very funny in the sense that when were the wiki was governor of River State, Tim Fubara was the accountant general of uh, River State. He personally was not accused of stealing, but were a wiki. Norma, Norma, where a wiki was supposed to be arrested. The day he handed over to anybody, the day he lost his immunity. But thank God for the emergence of uh, Tifnumbu. He quickly has a place to hibernate for now. Because you see, before the uh, 2023 Sharid elections, we the wiki who happened to be like that of Lagos. Hmm? You know that in Lagos, it is whatever the alphabet tells you that they generated from IGR is what the rest of you will be repeating. Lagos now generates over 30 billion a month. Are you sure that is actually what Lagos generates? Or how much they tell you they generate. So let's go back to reverse. As far back as uh, 2022, because the Bokowaris EFCC couldn't get to where we came because of immunity, they had to declare Fubara wanted. The man who knows where the body, the, where the bodies were buried, where the monies went, the one like a, a, you know, a doctor in the figure and give, giving with a week a, a clean bill of health, the accountant general of River States, Simenai Ubara, he was declared wanted by the EFCC. Baba. One year, put it so 14 months before the end of the uh, week, a week is eternal. Yubara <clears throat> and his wife and his family, they had to remain inside the government house of River State to avoid any arrest. These are open secrets. It's all because of money. The day that after with the wiki and sort of secured every sort of uh, opposition to his anointed candidate, Fubara, the rumor then was EFCC knew that if Fubara will come to PDP secretariat to come and uh, either pick up his uh, governorship form or submit the governorship form in person, we arrest him that day. 
So with a week, if you go and look at the video, where the week was acting like the bodyguard of a Fubara that day. And that is why it is paining where a week is so bad that he did everything to cover his ass and make Fubara governor only because he asked for 30%. 30% Fubara refused. Does Fubara know that? Shibi Fubara knows that we did not tell the river state people how much money we are actually generating. Because it is not like as if Sim Fubara attracted some foreign investors who have created more jobs and then uh, people are paying more taxes and businesses are paying more taxes in river state no the guy just stopped giving the money or stopped giving uh, caesar what caesar thought was is the 30 percent of the river state money and just less than a year Tim fubara has come out to tell everybody that listen I have more money to spend now, guys. Shebi, we told you that uh, the monthly IGR of uh, River State was uh, 12 billion every month. Well, I have done something better. Uh, it is now 27 billion a month. That is massive. Far, far double what they usually declare. But is this a good thing? According to Fubara, he is not sharing this with anybody. And that has made him bold enough to award a pro I mean, a, I mean, awarded several projects in I mean with the weakest local government area to the tune of a six billion naira. See all this I'm saying to you, right? They are just like a the prologue. There's no miracle done. Somebody who was taking something just decided not to give that again. Now you will understand why we the wiki we do everything to. Eh? Listen to Fubara. What's the magic? Hmm? River State people. It's like your money is finally been kind of maybe not everything, but a substantial part of it is now available. Hold Fubara now. When I was appointed the accountant general of the state, from the moment I assumed that position on the 1st of January 2020 the position of our state changed we started recording <laughs> we started recording the best reporting of accounting report in Nigeria you can go and check our record improved we had nothing to hide because we understand the numbers and the presentations were very clear to everybody. So what does it reflect? It means that transparency is there. Accountability speaks when your reporting are in order. It, because it shows judicious use of resources without fear. Honestly, when you're reporting, it shows that, look, your records are in order. And those were the services we rendered to the immediate past administration. No matter the challenges we are facing today, our eyes will still be on the ball. We will not lose focus. We have promised our people that our government will be a government of the people. We care for the people. The people is the most important thing. I read a book who said, what was the strength of Rome? The strength of Rome was just the people. When you have the people, you have everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter the higher mighty, the number of policemen that you carry, carry men you carry around. The people is the most important thing. Because the people are the ones who in their subunits control people who at the end control other people at the end makes the decision when the time comes. 
It's not the policemen. It's not the army. It's not the escort. It is the people. So our concern is the people. When we came on board, we had a very big challenge. For 11 years, there was no promotion in this state. So imagine a government that inherited about 52,000 civil servants and you had to pay them because they, they, what we were paying before I came in was an average of 5.3. Let us even do 25% of it across <coughs> board. It can't be anything less than 8 point something. Is it not? That is what we started paying. How much is our location? So we need to think outside the box. That was where we now did a rejig of our internal revenue. And I can tell you today, all the projects we are doing, we don't borrow. <laughs> we are very transparent. We are not hiding anything. That is why I boldly will say it. The least we do this period is 26, 27. The highest they were doing before is 12 and 13. <laughs> you're, not, you're not going to take the money from me now, so why, am I, why would I tell you? <laughs> it's for the people. Yes. And we'll make sure that we deploy this fund to the people. We'll make sure that we apply these funds areas that will bring positive change. Education, healthcare, agriculture. We we'll also do a few roads, but the most important thing is these three items. That is the only way we can save ourselves from this present situation of hardship. Save ourselves from this issue of societal ill. You call it courtism, whatever you call it. If there is no good education, education is the only way we can go to instrument we can use to fight it. And we need the health care. You need to be alive to even drive a good car on the road. You can imagine how much we spend in medical tourism. So do that. Shebo Shebo Ejari, Tubara. If he is sincere, it is actually a good thing. Okay? Because imagine from 12, 13 billion yeah, to 27 billion. That's a lot of money. And if it is indeed used for you, I mean, when the wiki was keeping away a lot of money from River State, a lot of it, River State currently is in debt of over 200, uh, sorry, over 300 billion naira. It is moderate, it's not that bad, except the fact that uh, the money was borrowed and then uh, looted, stolen. The noise where the wiki has been shouting and everywhere, people have come out to say is the worst of all those who have been in charge of the river states. Like it's actually absolute worst. But that's not the impression out there, Abby. Eh? That's not the impression where the wiki, Mr. Flyover one. Fly over two, fly over three, fly over four, fly over number five, fly over number six. You remember that? The guy didn't do any single promotion for all the civil servants in the state for eight years. Prior to that, Rotifmi, Amechi, Ubimajuda, Siscariot did not do any promotion in River State for three years. Plus, where the weekend is making it 11 years of no promotion. People were just being paid the same salary scale. And guess what? Where the weekend was the money bag. Oh, you see this confidence you are witnessing? It's because where the weekend was so loaded that other governors look like other governors, they feel like boy boy to him. They say where the weekend alone during his time, at the peak of his power, he himself was sponsoring over 15 people to be governors. It was sponsoring 15 governorship elections in Nigeria. In the north, oh, in the west, oh, in the east, oh, in the south, south, oh, because they went to him. Ah, Obaseki is a regular customer now. They go to him, there is money. So we can we be able to now say, this is how it's going to be done. 
That has been done. We'll give you, we'll give you two billion. I'll give you two billion. Okay? You will win. Don't worry. I'll buy that. You said to the INEC, you said to the this, then then you said to the judges. That's it. With the weekend, the only state governor that could actually mobilize other state governors for their own elections. At the peak of his uh, reign in river states. So the guy talks all the time. I seem to say he's indirectly talking back at uh, with the wiki. So you get like, I mean, I will tell you how much I, I mean, we are now making. Not that we did anything special. It's just that I am special. I am Fubara. I've always been helping to improve the IGR of these states. But now nobody's taking the money from us. So I've got 27 billion and I could do everything without even borrowing a dime. Not because we're the UK saved money, just because we're the UK stopped taking money. That's it. And I have seen some of the Agradorians who have actually condemned him. He's so he's he is such a, a very, very ungrateful person. Somebody made you a governor. What what don't you know what didn't you know what you are going into? Did the Fubara not know? What he was signing up for ah, Agbado, any Agbadoria, any Lushi Aji Aje, born to suffer, suffer I told you, majority of you are not really because you don't like, uh, you hate uh, corruption or hate this. No, it's because you are not benefiting from it. Nigerians, there are Nigerians who probably felt like he's ungrateful. I don't like ungrateful people, so they would have been sharing the money. So if you borrow, is using the money for you. Remember, people. If you know, they watch me from rivers and you are not a, a PDP, uh, a PDP guy, what do you call it, a member, a riverian, you are there from River State. Tell me, is it true that uh, Fubara is now using your money for you that you can see? Or all these things are just to rubbish with a wiki? Because now we know that with a wiki is absolute trash. Do we actually know? Or is, I don't know, don't worry. Let's go to the another one. Uh, today, the uh, two weeks wet run, I mean a dry run for the Nigeria Naira, the artificial buyback, the voodoo economy of Kadubi, Oduduwa, Ibe Fiole. This seems to be kind of like, either they are like taking a break, like they want to, they want to take a break, like let's, let's take a break. And they've taken a break for just about less than 24 hours. And the Nigerian era have started taking another turn. Remember, people were kind of wondering that, which kind of economy be this? The dollar is coming down. The price of a food commodity is going up. Food inflation is now higher, 40%. What is all this? People were not sure. But there were rumors that the uh, price of bag of rice is kind of has come down, right? From 80,000 down to 54,000, 56,000. That's some fair thing, even though it's probably, you need to even go more. But the shocker is that today, eh, from 1,100 Naira or 1,070 Naira to a dollar, where some even said they got it two days ago for 950 Naira to a dollar from the places where Kadobi gave them dollars. Or if you couldn't get from where Kadobi gave them dollars, 1,365 below the changes collects money, then $10,000 each from Kadobi every day during the time of that their dry run in order to determine how much they will sell the dollars. Since the demand at the time is not really that much, they were able to pump out at a point, eh, they spent $69, $69 million given to the below the change in Nigeria in a space of uh, Four days, see, four days, $69 million. So that's the money that was sold for $950, $1,100. So it's like the money is not being shared again in the last 24 hours. Because more people couldn't get the cheap one. The available one has now affected the overall uh, exchange rate again. And if nothing is done, if they don't pump out more of that dollars, in this coming week, we may begin to have another problem of, and this time around, still, you were all watching how the dollar, I mean, how the Naira, from 1,900 Naira to a dollar, when Kadobi and his gang started their voodoo, artificial, Nigerian Naira fight, fighting back. 
and from 1,900 Naira. Let's even say, come down straight to 1,100 Naira. But you remember when these criminals came in from, you know, when they exchanged the baton with, with each other, right? The uh, Nigerian Naira to a dollar was uh, 710 Naira to a dollar. Now, 710 Naira to a dollar, IMF that brags that they were the one who advised Tifnubu to remove subsidy. The moment the announcement was made, everything else just went south. Abi, then the dollar jumped straight to 1,900 in the space of uh, eight months. Then they decided to start kind of like selling the cheap dollars to see if they can break the market and all of that. And I said, they will need a lot of dollars to actually continue to break it. Since the Naira that is fighting back is not because of increased uh, electricity, increased production, increased job creation, or anything at all, or increased exportation. It was just these guys who decided to go and take part of your foreign reserve and use a fraction of that to, to buy, I mean, sorry, to sell at their own subsidized rate, 1,100. When they remove subsidy, a bag of rice jumped from 30,000 Naira to over 80,000 Naira, remember? A liter of petroleum also jumped from 167 Naira to over 650 Naira. That happened because of that singular announcement. It's been, it's, I mean, it's been two weeks now that since Nigeria Naira and this artificial buyback has been taking place. It has taken them more than two weeks see, for the bag of rice to come down from 80,000 to 56,000 Naira. Now, if this, listen to me very well, if the buyback they were doing, eh, all these uh, cheap dollars they were, they were subsidizing, that they possibly just stopped we demand to override the supply in the last 24 hours and the price they did not change again. Now you see, it took them two more than two weeks for the price to come down. Now, if this thing no, if they no quickly pump out, pump out uh, more dollars now that they can sell for 900, that'd be 800, that'd be 1,000. If this thing lasted for another at last for another 48 hours, Baba, your bag of price to, to that spent two weeks before it come down to 50, 56,000 there. Eh? It will shock you, say, if it jumps straight away down to 100,000, 105,000, 110,000 error in the next uh, one week. Oh. And I keep saying this to you. This is not even a wish. This voodoo economy eh, will bring out the beast in you. Hmm. I say, this voodoo economy will bring out the beast in us. This balablu economy will bring out the peace to you because they deceive you so well that they ask you to start clapping and begin to, uh, uh, they were even demanding that they needed a medal for bringing down your, for, for, for uh, destroying your economy eh? and destroyed your, uh, what you call that again, standard of living and then they wanted you to celebrate them once they, I mean, when, when they brought their voodoo rates down through the back door, abracadabra, buy back. That does not really reflect with anything in the economy activities. Nigerians are so poor right now. Nigerians are like destitutes. Oh my God, I'm going destitutes. Even like, say, may you go to the um, refugee camps. Refugee camp where people come in to give people support. Eh? And then you see the number, and you said, ah, what kind of business can I do here? Or what kind of business can I do with these people? I must see number. Maybe I should start food business. Now, starting food business is not a problem because people need to eat. But the problem is that uh, the people that cannot afford to buy the food, what of what use is their number? Country of 210 million people. 145 to 150 million of them are living in multi-dimensional poverty, extreme poverty, till she described. And they still wanted to think giant of Africa. Giant of Africa, the, 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 the giant of uh, I mean, the highest concentration of uh, destitutes. Nigerians have been made so poor that they could barely afford any real thing. Right? The number is no longer a blessing. It, is, it has become a cause. How do you feed them? How do you provide health care for them? How do you keep them safe? 
These are supposed to be the priority, but it's not their priority. It is never, it has never been. And that is why they can play, they can play with your lives, gamble with it, and begin to ask you to, are you not happy? Are you not happy that the Naira is coming down? Eh? The time the Naira, the time the Naira is going up, you are you are talking and talking. Oh, shut dead, hear me. Now so now so you read it, Tony. Eh? Is it, do you think life is all about what you want to hear? Okay, yeah, now you are hearing it too. Nigeria Naira to dollar is now 400 Naira. Would that make you happy? When people can still afford, they can never afford. Like more and more people are falling into the bracket of those that cannot afford to buy basic things. And these guys are gambling with your lives. They are gambling with your savings. They are gambling with your investment. They are gambling with your insurance. They are gambling with your health. They are gambling with your life. And they can keep doing it back and forth, back and forth. Because they can count on you that you are going to wish them well. You are going to believe what they say. And you are going to pray that what they are saying call, may God help them. And the moment they, they fail you, shameless you, you will be looking for who to gaslight. And there's something they say. The dildo of consequences eh, is highly and well lubricated. As they say that uh, bad governance is a stray bullet. Eh? It doesn't discriminate. It's the same thing with uh, the dildo of uh, consequences. It is well lubricated. And that is the part where they say Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria no happens. So once Nigeria, they happen to you, right? My mom will say, uh, oh, please, God don't do me. Your color what you. It's one of my mom's a popular saying. I was uh, so young and I'm like, Kilon do you think of your cool? She was metaphorically, you know, saying, what I am facing, it's not physical, but I can feel the thrusting. I can feel the, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the uh, gravity of the of it. So please, stay away. And that's what Nigeria is. Everyone who, you know, whether directly or indirectly, whether you are in support or you are not, Especially those of you who are in support, hoping that uh, somehow what you are expecting is a better deal from these rogues, but they gave you the worst of the worst deal. The deal do of consequences is always well lubricated. You will feel it. I just hope that you'll be bold enough to, you know, wishes don't run a country. You can win it. I mean, you can, you can use propaganda to seize power. And from my own experience, you will need more than a propaganda to run a country. You will actually have to do the job. But this one's, eh? I don't think so. The rogues that, uh, the, the, the rogue that escaped, Yeye Belu of Kogi, Yeye Adusa Belu, the wanted uh, thief of Kogi, Number one he is not missing, oh. Yeye Belu is not missing. And I don't know if it is just me. Have you seen the same EFCC freeze his bank account? Begin to take his properties? It seems so unusual. I mean, Yeye Belu still have, excuse me, Yeye Belu still have access to money. It does. They still have access to protection. They know Yeye Belo is inside the Lugat house. Government house uh, in Lokoja. They know. But they have arrested those policemen that they blame for his escape from the grip of the EFCC in Abuja uh, two days ago. 
You know, normally they have told him, Bar Station Local Law Report, all right. Bar Station Local Law Report, all right. Yeye Belo is yet to surface in the last 72 hours. But the policemen, according to the report, the policemen that sort of a shielded him from being arrested, they have been detained and they are being held responsible for Belo's uh, escape. Some others are already calling on the Kogi status of assembly to do something about uh, the Olododa smuggled him out of the grip of uh, the EFCC. Olodo, I mean, Ododo, Olodo, 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 who happened to be the product of uh, the same uh, Yeyebelo, who endorsed and certified an office for Yeyebelo, an office called a newly created office called the office of the ex-governor. So as uh, for Yeye Belo to enjoy police protection like a governor and still kind of parade himself, pretty much look at himself like a governor. Yeye Belo happened to be the youngest governor in Nigeria when he became governor of Kogi State. Somebody said, at least many of his mates are stealing more than that money. And another person responded, shut up your mouth. There is no mate of Yeye Belo that stole over 80 billion in Nigeria as a governor because there is no Yeye Belo's age mate that ever becomes governor, not before him and not after him. So he's the youngest governor. So if you are going to talk about leadership, Nigeria leadership, where a lot of people believe that uh, the old relic, the criminal old uh, politicians who never want to let go, the same, they are the problem. No, they are not. Majority of you are just waiting for your turn to wreck your own havoc. Eh? If Nigeria can be put on the eBay and somebody is ready to pay, some of you are willing to make the deal without giving a damn to whatever happens to those who are inside the place. They can find a place, they can find their own place as long as you get paid. You are worse than them, no doubt, but you are learning from them. And they say, you see, when you learn from your masters, you are expected to be better than them, don't you? Yeah, you are expected to. And that's why Yeye Belu, who called himself a lion, at the time he was governor, he actually saw himself like a king that was going to be there forever. On one occasion, he had a chance of bragging to his own people, a white lion, Kogi is my den. White lion to the white chicken, you know, or a crossbreed lion and chicken. Watch the end of this video. Let me tell you, just a while ago, while I was coming from Abuja, while I was coming from Abuja back to my territory, to my day, the lion's day, an antelope crossed the road. Let this be the first and last. I'm watching you. I will not caution again. I will not warn again. You will hear it. A few moments later. God have mercy upon us. <laughs> Do you know GYB Mashem or Lenny Yaya ya belo ma she won le yin joba I know Yaya ya belo ma she won le yin joba do you know Yaya ya ma she won le yin joba but that kind of a rhyme is actually a tune I think somebody actually makes that up sometimes when they, I mean when that video came out they put the sound into it do you know Yaya Belo Mashe won't let you job or not? I know Yaya Belo Mashe won't let you job. Do you know like that?
do I want to do that like I think it's the left one that do you know yeah yeah belo ma she won't let in joba no yeah yeah belo ma a no go share one Nigerian court says nobody should arrest him nobody should prosecute him for stealing stealing 80 billion naira from the people of Kogi states making them one of the poorest states in Nigeria unpaid workers unpaid contractors unfinished projects but here we are having a media trial listen to this nigerian court ruled and this man is not having it i'll show you yeah yeah belo hmm. do you know yeah yeah belo my share one lane job ah no yeah it might uh, lawyers are uh, so disposed to say oh whatever court order will be and that's true but at the same time it's in the same breath say why should some courts act so unjudicial? I mean, I don't understand why anybody should give an order at large, say somebody cannot be arrested, questioned, investigated. I mean, it's, it's totally unjudicial. Because the freedom that the law, court, law, law gives you is freedom from protection. There's no harm against a citizen being investigated. So I think the judicial jurisprudence is so poor if it's not mischief, it's just elementary lack of knowledge. I mean, mm. so perpetually, just like the one they gave to Odile at a point, so perpetually, it shouldn't be quizzed. It shouldn't be, assuming they, they are able to commit a crime now, kill somebody as uh, ex governor, the police is restrained from asking, inviting. I think there should be a judicial policy from the Supreme Court saying, I, in fact, it's something that someone should be sacked for misconduct. Why should they give to those? Look, you can give another restraining them from doing X, Y, Z within a period of time and say the turn that they should come and explain why they should do that in the next two days. But these uh, others are ridiculous and it's not good for judicial, for legal profession, for us to emphasize obey customary order, obey kang kangaroo order because it's a judicial order. Yes, that's true. At the same time, in the same breath, it takes you to tango. There's a, the other side of dignity of the court is that judges themselves should, should not be used to make ridiculous orders against state institutions that have constitutional up work to do. For example, nobody should make an order resenting police from inviting, investigating anybody. But that's, that's really unconstitutional. Mm. Now, back to the point around Yaya Bello. I think it's really um, sad. Look, you should borrow a leave from uh the 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 the, the royal beer, uh, brewer called uh what is it um uh Cubano high priest he said something very important he said when they invite you go there mm. that's what Cubana said he said go there the efc doesn't kill anybody look this is a governor for eight years who has a who appointed attorney general who understands how the court works he shouldn't be afraid of an indictment there are many people who EFCs have indicted, a few of them have escaped, quashed and, you know, discharged and acquitted. Some are still on trial, but traveling, doing other things. Even some are still government officials who have cases in the FCC. I mean, right. In this government, there are plenty of them, including the Senate President himself has cases. Mm. Several other have cases. So, so, so it's actually, it tells a story of deep disorientation and... Mm. and and I mean, it's a, it, this, this is like a comical character who is now, and again, we must talk about the acting governor who lent himself, presumably, to an illegality. No, I mean, no, the president. That's sorry, the, the, the president, president governor, uh, governor. The president <laughs> governor, I'm sorry, not acting. The yeah. president governor who lent the used instrument of his immunity and take control. Mm. But the biggest scandal here is, I think we'll probably get to that. Why does the security forces work? Was, that time was EFCC uh, the military fighting. Mm. Then, why are they so disorganized? Yeah. Why is it, it raises the issue of, of rivalry between and it's also the a question security of corruption. agencies. I mean, look, it? corruption. We saw when I was a, 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 a advisor to the Senate president, in a, we saw Chimaroke's police fighting with Kenamani's police over protocol. I mean, this is so look, look at the story. The police security officers feel more obliged to their principal. Who pay them and give them kickbacks and kick front and everything yeah, than for, to the state? It's a deep-seated corruption in the police force that they don't serve the country; they serve the big men who parade them.
Nigeria is in crisis. And this crisis, some of you will look at them and you will laugh. I understand that uh, sometimes, okay, when situation is beyond crying, or if you have actually teared and teared up and teared up, you've cried and you do not have, have any tears left. Sometimes you just laugh. That's what we say in Europe. But we say sometimes the situation can be beyond crying. And when situation is beyond crying, like you, it's so bad that you want to cry, but tears are not coming anymore. Sometimes it's just going to be better to just laugh. Some people don't like it. Like, what is funny? We are talking about serious thing. All of you are laughing. No, they, that's all they have to do. I mean, a lot of us have actually cried internally, like, oh, um, why? Nigeria is in crisis. And it is a big one. And there is a trickle effect of what all of this you have been hearing. There's a trickle effect that it's going to have on the majority of those who are like uh, below the ladder, the ones that they call the poor. Corruption is so bad that it bears poverty. Poverty is so bad that it dehumanizes man. And poverty is so terrible and so bad that it will enhance the rise in crimes, different kinds of crimes. To the point that to even help those who have been who have become the victims of a failed country called Nigeria, to say you want to help them. Eh? That in itself could actually could actually be a total call of uh, a total call for problems on yourself too. It is that bad that uh, poverty has blind. I mean, you know, has, has sort of blinded the people so much that they do not mind to make victims of everyone. We are victims, so you too should be a victim. And it's because we are poor now. About people who have, uh, who have put their own hard end money on enterprises, where out of sympathy, they felt like they were creating something, helping, every little help. Businesses here and there that Nigerians have, they ran them down, they destroyed them, and the owners, they were left to lick their wounds. Country had, country had. But the poorest of the poor that you are thinking of helping so that you can actually build an economy that you can maybe so, you know, survive. I feel sorry for this guy, but it is an example of what Nigeria is. Especially a corrupt country that these criminals have created. And the reason why the criminals in Nigeria who created all this, uh, who created this failed country, the reason why they continue to have those who still defend or support them is because they are pure, they are just pure reflection of the rogues and then the, 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 the born criminals too, that the system, well, these criminals that the system has uh, sort of uh, popped up, those who are waiting for their own turn. I have had, I have seen videos where your supposed employee became your greatest undoing for your business. Poultry business, store business, that business. And then you pick somebody that you believe that, oh, you are helping them economically by giving them a job and they target your business. 
until you will lose it so that all of us can remain poor. You will be in debt. They will be jobless. And everybody can go back and start complaining about how bad the government is, how bad the politicians are. How do you describe this? If you are a new startup in Nigeria or anywhere, how would you describe this experience? The egg shot yesterday. The egg shot yesterday. I know that the egg shot yesterday. What made the egg shot? These are the things that make the egg shot. Can you see? The egg that is here is more than two crates. It passed. It passed. So I'm going to owe three people that is working in this pen. Responsible. That is working inside this pen responsible for this thing. I have a man that has many times. I don't complain. You complain and mind about this. Man that they take this thing, they do like this. They do like this. So who is doing this thing? Who is that person? He will use this thing now. Find everything what they do for this pen. For this uh for this farm. Who is doing this thing? Jesus. Nobody has said that is the one. I mean this farm. This egg pack come and pack himself here. Jesus. The egg pack himself. Put himself here. Even the people responsible for that test stealing, they are there shouting, hey, Shineke. Hey God! Hey my God! Hey, how could anybody do this? Oh my God! Like that. And it happens everywhere. It does. Some of them will take your stuff and they will suddenly become fatter. They are they are skinnier when they come into your into your work. But when they are living, they are fatter. Still live. Because they will tell you, it's because my salary, our salary is not enough for me. It's because, you know, I have five children and my husband is not working. Oh, my wife is dead. That is why I'm stealing from you. Like, do you actually know what it takes these farmers or what they have been going through since this economic jihad of APC started? Have you not been seeing some of them having to, like, no, now number one, it, what it take what it takes you to actually feed those uh, those chickens to lay eggs. Eh? If you know, it's like they are eating money for those who have poultry to feed your chickens, to feed your bro from broiler to what they have they, before they become uh, laying uh, eggs. It is like they are eating money. You will be watching them, and you'll be seeing the hundred thousand naira worth of a uh, uh, feed gone. Like it's nothing. And you have to do the same thing. Next month, you have to do the same thing another month. And you feed them that much. And you are still paying those who are working there. But they blame you for their poverty. Uh-uh. Please have mercy now. Ah, have mercy of God. Have mercy on us now. You know that we are poor. You know that we are poor. I've got five children. I am suffering. I don't have this or that. And... But if you don't find out, you are running your business at loss. Finally, you are unable to pay them anymore. And then, they don't even mind. Don't pay us. At least we make more money from stealing your egg or stealing your chicken. So if you catch them, they will gaslight you. They will shout God. They will use God. They will use everything to kind of threaten you. And you'll become a bad person. Uh-uh. Ah, now, so rich people, they do. 
That is why I don't like rich people. Eh? They have been begging him since yesterday. Now he's threatened that he's going to arrest them. He's already told the police. They, eh? If you arrest them now, who is going to be feeding their children? Eh? That's why I don't like all these rich people. They will blame you. And that is what a corrupt country does. Corrupt country creates poverty. Since poverty is inequality, then it will create so many other crimes that are always going to be there. Eh? In that poverty state, even those of you who believe that you are better off, they will draw you down. They will drag you down. They will pull you until you find yourself inside that pit of poverty. A lot of us are playing, we are paying black taxes and we are, we are trying to get a cure from that. And we should be probably be holding uh, in uh, August. We should be hosting a seven days uh, revival, eh? fasting and prayer for all of us outside uh, Nigeria in the diaspora that uh, within seven days make the universe cleanse us of uh, the, the affliction of black taxes. Are you with me? Because even at that, you will realize that everything about Nigeria, in all sincerity, if you are not careful, it is to drag you back into what you are running from, poverty. And when I saw that video, I felt sorry for the owner of the farm. He is happy he saw them. That doesn't mean that his dilemma is over. A society that they have created army of a poor people. They are, that society has created army of a different uh, criminals. And every one of them is out there to get you. Every one of them. So it's up to you now. If you want to go in there or not. On the issue of uh, those who are investing in that place. Who are taking the risk. Just know that you know what you are getting yourself into. If you're opening a business there, just know that on the side, you could at the same time be opening a charity. Because last, last, eh, majority of them inside your, your establishment, they are coming from the background of where they believe. Stealing from you could actually be an opportunity that you can't miss. Even if your business is going to die, Due to that, where it's an opportunity. They are coming from a hard place created by the criminal politicians in that space. So you are always going to be a victim of what they have created. Do the math. And that is why in this situation, as a, a would-be victim of a contraption called Nigeria, you also need to be very careful that you do not walk straight into their trap. If you are in Lagos, Stop crossing their motorway, their expressways, or else hmm? this could be your lot. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. My friends, don't let them have free don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass yourself. For your own good, it's just an advice. Lately, I have been seeing videos like this. If you are in Lagos, for your own number one, for your own safety. Stop crossing the motorway for your own safety. It doesn't make any sense. I've crossed it too. And I've watched people get knocked down by a fast moving car on in uh, Lagos, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, Ekorodu. What do you call that place again? Ekorodu Road around Pangru and Dombanikoro. It's not safe. I know a lot of you give different excuses why you have to cross the road. It's not safe. Your life and all that is not safe. But on the other hand, to avoid embarrassments like that, where even those who are trying to, you know, those ones who are like 
uh, arresting them there, the Kai guys, they are not arresting you because they love you or love your life. Oh. They don't, it's not because they don't want you to die. Oh. They are arresting you because that is also a means of uh, revenue generation for them too, because they are given targets. The target with the way Nigeria is right now, in the Tiknumbus, Nigeria, don't go crossroad for Lagos. So they will just use you as part of the revenue generation uh, contributors. Because from what I heard, some of these guy people, they have targets. The more they catch you, eh, is the more they make money. And possibly their bosses enjoy their, their weekends. The choice is yours, just so you know. I was talking about uh, being used and dumped. The people of Ebejuleki, Ebejuleki in that same Lagos, they had to come out there today because you've heard about the landmark. Landmark is this multi billionaire Naira investment. It's a beach resort where you have uh, all kinds of uh, games, family resort. Uh, you know, our daughter uh, kind of a uh, meetup, uh, you know, boat cruise or should I say cruise trip and all of that. It's meant to be a multi billionaire business there that has that is expected to also generate over uh 2,000 jobs. That's massive. But they said part of the land, which is uh, the sea where they were to have their beach. Is uh, a proper is the property of uh, the league, I mean, so the Nigerian government, federal government. So they want to build the coastal highway along there. So there's been controversy of uh, oh, why would they do this now when they can easily read the body, blah 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 blah. Anyway, sure, they are not the only problem. They are not the only victims of that uh, shenanigans going on in that route. The newly created route called the Lagos Calabar. Star Highway. There are so much uh, fraud and fraudulent activities going on, like taking people's lands in the name of we are building new road, only for the owners of those lands who have been there, like our land, though, to realize that those lands have now been like allocated to be sold to God knows who. But we thought you said this land was for was for development and for highway. Then I will go get to this or this part too. Who are you selling our land to? We thought you said it's for the highway. So it's kind of going on. I mean, right now, development and then uh, robbery. Nigeria will never cease to amaze you. But one thing that actually jolts me from what this man had to say is the fact that uh, they were those they are always being, they are the people that they are always used during election. How can you now do this to us after election? Say, oh, Baba. Sorry, I'll help you tell the world that they are taking your lands. See, they have names. So I think I actually have the, uh, the names of all the communities uh, in the area. If you are from the area, you probably will know this. In Lagos, if you are from uh, Iwerekun, Solu, Solu, Olorumija. If you are from Awofe and somewhere around the Odushin or coastal communities, there are those who are like next to those uh, sea there. They have always been looking for the time to kick all of them out since they started their Lagos Atlantic projects along that line. And indeed, they also have their own electric deep uh, seaports. You see all these communities that are still there, they will, go in they will go into extinction in the next five years. And they know it because the entire place is already kind of like already behind the, they have already hide the entire place. When I still did it, they give themselves ballet and all of that. It's just a matter of time. Ibejuleke people says Tifnubu shouldn't do this to them. Papa, 
Even though personally, eh, I know that it is totally uncalled for. But it won't be the first time that if Nobu is taking over people's lands in Lagos, giving them to his friends in the name of development, only for you to see them as private uh, land and private properties. And the owners of the land, far gone, displaced, their houses and homes destroyed. Who are you going to go to? Go and do press protest. Go and protest. Who is going to now change that? Nobody changes it. That is what Nigeria represents. That is what Nigeria is. And that's what the people of Ibeju lucky. My time is almost up, and I really do want to take calls tonight if uh, you will be interested in uh, adding to this. However, we won't round up without having to give the credit to this, uh, the chess master. I'm sorry, the chess uh, master. I've been a chess grandmaster. You see, this uh, young man uh, started, uh, you know, the project called the Chess in the Slum. The founder of the Chess in the Slum was a guy who decided to use uh, chess as a means of, uh, uh, you know, uh, revital, revitalization and then uh, rejuvenation of the vulnerable in the society, especially the young ones. Honestly speaking, this uh, is projects have not just been life changing projects. They are like a sort of a world touching project i'll put it that way you see tunde went under the osho the bridge where normally you will see the abandoned children or children who ran away from home uh sleeping rough under the bridge and possibly doing some many jobs no education no nothing just there available at the beck and call of what the ash society as for them so Tunde was able to, act, you know, it, I'm talking about a place where ordinarily, if you're not, if you're not really tough, you don't go there. Places, you know, a place where to even say you want to do something good, you would have to actually bribe them or appease them. He found comfort around them. They welcomed him. And from there, hope was bad. And for the past uh, two, three years, I have actually been following him, right? And his activities. He has been using the same position and all of the successes is recorded in these years eh, to bring more positive development and changes to lives of so many other young people. I mean, I have seen him. Then a few days ago, there was, well, until it became that uh, more uh, viral, right? So a few days ago, we realized there was having uh, a 60, sorry, 58 hours uh, sort of marathon uh, chess game with uh, someone called the American uh, ch chess master, Sean. And they were going to play for 58 hours nonstop. And it won't be just with uh, Sean. It's going to be with other players. I mean, like tens or if not nearly 100 of people who also play 100 of players who played with him all of this was just like to raise awareness over what he's doing giving education giving a shelter giving clothing and health support to the supposed that the society rejects giving them new hope and uh, aspiration and he's been doing it so well like i feel so useless that why can't I just sit somewhere and learn how to play chess? To the point that, uh, that uh, all these young, young people, their lives changed and their knowledge changed and they became empowered to the point that they are now those who you can point at and say, wow, I am encouraged. 
So he was in New York with uh, his uh, next, and many Nigerians have been there to see him too, by the way. He was raising a million dollars for the support of uh, the, uh, you know, the poor, the poor children of Africa. It's been everywhere, but because of our time, I'll tell you, he finally achieved his set goal. He played the chess with a lot of other players that lasted for 60 hours without losing a game. Whatever that means, it must be grand. And it's now the talk of everyone. And I want us to also see that it's not all gloom and doom. Okay? Somebody, you know, the glory of Nigeria is mostly individual. Oh, you don't know that? Oh, it is individual. So if you are able to kind of get something or push something and achieve something, then they are likely going to say, oh, he's a Nigerian. Oh, he's a Nigerian. He's a... You know what I mean? No, come on. The wreck and the disgrace and the destruction that has been associated to further downgrade what Nigeria, has, what Nigeria is in the global uh, uh, space uh, remains the main uh, job or should I say main aspiration of your criminal politicians in Nigeria. But individually, people have managed to kind of do their best to show to the world that if not because of this contraption, there could have been so many superstars from the countries forced together called the people forced together to live in a contraption called Nigeria. That could have been so many countries that could have been shining out great and great, great men and women that would change the world. But in Nigeria, they killed them. So I'm happy for Tunde. A great job and a great achievement. Uh, the moment he ate, I think, 54 hours before the last six hours on record. You want to see? So I have seen people, people who have been through a lot of things. I'm talking about a lot of things that, uh, that, that, that has affected them. And in their recovery, some said they chose their chess. Some would say they chose this or that. And they were able to sort of like recover back from their trauma. I don't know Tunde's uh, trauma or inspiration. And I don't want to know. But somebody saw a loophole and he decided to step in, make his mark known. And I respect somebody like that. I will always respect people like that. And I respect this, I mean, I respect this guy too. A few hours, a few hours, I mean, sorry, a few hours after that uh, video you saw, he finally broke it. Now he's the uh, older, the world record older of uh, the longest chess. Uh, sort of the longest uh, hours of playing chess, multiple chess games, sort of. This record was said to have been held by two Norwegians uh, a few years back. He's broken that now, 60 hours. And Sean had this to say about today at the end of it all. Listen. Yeah. 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 He doesn't look at what he receives, he doesn't look at anything. All he looks at is the future of the children. And I love his heart. And when I heard I was able to collaborate with him on this, I said yes right away. Yes, sir. And I'm love glad son. I did. You know what they say? Nothing easy. You know. I messed it up. Nothing good comes from something easy. Yeah. 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 Talk again. Talk this talk loud. You know what they say, nothing good from something easy. Me and, what me and Tunde did this, this last three days was probably one of the hardest things I ever did in my life. And it seems like we were just playing the game, but we played over 200 games. And literally, I almost quit. But because he says it all the time, we do it for the kids, I said I refuse. 
and we picked each other up at different moments throughout these three days, man. Yeah, yeah, it was a special yeah. day, man. God was with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's some great stuff. And I hope you uh, you get inspired to do something too. All right. So I want to say thank you so much, everyone, uh, for your time. And I'm going to take a quick break. If you want to still probably uh, be part of this, the number to call is right here on your screen. Okay? Use it. When I come back, I will take calls. Don't go anywhere yet. At least. Hmm? <laughs> Hello, brother Maye. Good afternoon. Well, good evening in your place, sir. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening, uh, Celia. Our lady, how are you? Yes. Um, wonderful. Thank you, sir. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us yes, again. Sir. Go on. So, about this uh, food, uh, me, 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 and the Yoruba people. Wait, agreement. What, what, what was it called? I had signing peace agreements. Hmm. Jesus. Okay, okay. now no I don't know what to no call that. Kill our farmers. They are free to go to farms oh, now because we have now signed a yeah. peace deal. Like, seriously. This is the height of it because so it's like it's uh, getting ridiculous. So, so. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why the thing it just is like my head was shaved off my head, my, like I'm walking on my back, ba like skull. I don't know because this is like the height of witchcraft. We are seeing what is going on in the country day by day. Even people outside Nigeria are seeing what is going on. And then Yoruba people, I have seen videos of Yoruba people that the Fulanese have gone with their cat cows and they've eaten their cassava, their stuff on their farms, and it's so. It's painful to watch and stop. And then some Yoruba people will not. I don't even yeah, understand. Is it that some people? No, actually, see, hmm. uh, Celia, if I if I am allowed to really bring stories as they truly are, some of them, we probably won't have this channel anymore. If I'm allowed, even as at uh, yesterday, there were still people butchered like that, butchered somewhere in the Tory. A Tory somewhere in Augusteto, they butcher them and they kill them. They butcher the skull like that. Fulani, Fulani, they call them Fulani as men. How could you call it a farmer's others clashes? Now only farmers they die. We know the same way the 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 others they are sustained injury during the clash. But it's because I'm not allowed to no. bring all those graphic images on your screen like this. That's why I just keep them out. Is this horrible? I'm waiting for the third thing to happen because the first one is the people that the rightful people that are fighting for a true Yoruba nation. Their 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 um their their fight is being 
uh, corrupted in some ways with that group that, uh, well, I think it's some kind of manipulation or something. And then now, another one came up with the uh, Fulani people trying to, okay. So this, if you notice, these are like two things that just came up against the same people, Yoruba. Why? Why Yoruba? That is what I do not understand. Uh, this, is and then, about, and, uh, this is just about uh, seven weeks, less than two months uh, after two Yoruba, I mean, three Yoruba Obas were killed in a space of uh, three days. Thank and you. This moment, I was going there. Nothing on it. Thank you, sir. What about the women that were raped? What about the, the, the children that were born into this world from, 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 from a union, a cursed, well, it's a cursed union anyway, so from a cursed union, what about what about the insecurity? So now, when they agree with Fulanis, to me, that just me, that just shows pop and clear that they're scared of these people. We to me, that is it. Mm -hmm. And they have guaranteed us that we can go back to farm now. So oh, let us be happy, Celia. They promised us we can now go back to our farms in Yoruba. Like anyway, good luck to them. Yes, so good luck to them. We shall see. And they are going to start with them. The, that, 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 that man that was signing the thing, he's even turning, uh, uh, he's even turning his head to ask the uh, Fulani man, like if everything will be, uh, mm -hmm. did, didn't he look so stupid? I swear. Tell me about can, it. Can, 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 can. Oh my God, where is his mother? Hey. Anyway, that man, eh, he's going to, because they need to teach him a lesson, a very horrible one at that. He is going to be on their list. She, he, he has chosen to, 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 to sell his butter for a pot of soup. Eh? The innocent blood that has been shed, it, it will never become a river. That is my own. It will never flow in your land. Lie, 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 lie. Until I lie. And that's it will never to flow. To remind all of us here that, listen, actions have uh, consequences. If, even if you keep quiet, that is also an action because we say actions and inactions, they are both the same thing. If there's something that needed to be done and it's not done, it's called inaction. If there's something that shouldn't be done or allowed, it's been done. An action is taking place. Now, all of us go actually have a, we will not share from it, whether we keep quiet or not. Brother Maegu, Mama. Brother Maegu, that man, I'm suspecting he's one of those baby boomers. And there are great baby boomers. Don't get me wrong, guys. There are baby boomers that are really great intellectuals, but these one, no, the dealing all I got to Aaron. I don't even know what to call that guy. But that guy, whatever thing they have done to him, it will not reach any of us. It let it stay there with him. And he's even asking the guy for permission to assure. Just show off. It is not beyond the hall there. They said they are sending it to Tifnumbu so that Tifnumbu can help them ratify it. <laughs> we shall see. Anyway, see. yes, we shall see. And I'm, I'm, I'm right here. We are watching. And another thing I want to say is. Uh, sorry, I would divert a bit from this because oh. about the the um, the brother I met on this platform, brother Paula Penga. I know he's listening, so I've been trying to send this uh, little help to him, but it's not been going through. I have tr he has given me account. I went to tap tap send. That is an app that I know you send money like one minute plus the money has entered the account. I've done businesses. I have done projects at home to, to send the money through that, and it didn't go through. Actually, I didn't see. Dubai on the list of the uh, countries I could do a transfer. And then I asked him, he now gave me two different Nigerian accounts that I have money in my Nigerian account to do transfer, which is a lot more easier than sending through the app. I even tried that like two times. It will tell me that the account does not exist. So we've been communicating, but I don't know what else to do because at this point, I don't want it to be like I made a fake promise or I failed because I don't know what he's going through. Oh, could yeah, it be that these Dubai people have started their witch hunt or oh, restrictions or stuff? So you know, I don't know at this point what to do. Let, let, let us do it this way, Celia. Let's uh, see the fact that you've made this known like to all of us and he's probably going to see or hear that too, right? Then he will reach out to okay? mm. And I will say, talk to him, all right? Now that he knows that you've been having a problem with all those information, okay? Well, thank you anyway. Thank you. Yeah, he, right. he knows because we've been chatting. He knows. So I, I, I don't know. Another means of uh, getting it, you know? If he's not going into one yes. until he finally goes into, but it has to be the one he gave you himself. Sure you get. So, and then, oh, see yeah, well, yeah. Celia, 
Thank All right, so God help us in this struggle. We'll continue with this struggle. We're not backing down. We're not backing down. That's my own. Thank it's you. Safe, okay, you have a very good one, ma'am. Yes, sir. Now, I have another caller on the line. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? Good evening, sir. Good evening, all. How are you? It's been a while. It's been quite some time. I wanted to reach out to to you but then uh the channel has become the gate of heaven <laughs> it can really be very <laughs> you know lately right um uh, youtube has been a mess to start with okay so it simply means that uh oh. uh at this time of the year for some reason they chose to shut down the algorithm for this channel which means not everybody gets the notification that uh, my ego is live, so therefore the traffic is not so massive. And a lot of people can still get a chance now, those who are always finding it hard to get through, like yourself right now. Oh. It could be easier these days. Oh, well, anyway, I'm happy to be here tonight I'm again. Uh, this right is Jamilola from, from Nigeria, though. Yeah, me, I know. Thank you so much, bro. So, how is everybody? Yeah, uh, so. Yeah, fine, fine. So, I would say I'm fine, but I don't know about every other person right here in Nigeria. But then, okay. <laughs> because it has really, I mean, the country is a real mess. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm here to share some of my experiences. And one of the videos I saw on the uh, program today is one of the is one of the reasons I'm calling. So although I have other things I want to yeah, touch on as well. The video where Kai was arresting people and you know pushing them in the one thing I've noticed in Lagos is if Lagos State hires anyone and puts this uniform on them, the moment you get close to them, you realize they are just stout, all of them, including their bosses in the office. If they are listening to me, I mean I've been, I've had encounters with them and I've had encounters yes, with so the true. last smart people. So I've had an encounter with you. They are always going to act unprofessionally anyway. Yes. They are, I mean, I was watching this video and I'm saying to myself, if, if those ladies are close to me, I would sue them. Hmm. What's the point roughhandling them, pushing them, touching their bomb and pushing them into the vehicle? I mean, for whatever reason, I would say, okay, yes, I agree that they've done something against the law of the land, let them get punished for it, and I'll come back and sue you for harassment. That's that's assault on those guys pushing their bomb, you know, I mean, people that are married. And that's, that's why people think that uh, you can't fight government in that place. As lawless as it is, right, you can sue them and actually win them. The problem is, yes, would they yes. ever actually pay the compensation? That's the only problem. Or you can sue them and win them. Yes, you can. And win them. The, the truth is... Uh, F their compensation, nobody needs their money. They are just part of S and all these idiots that all over it. I mean, the encounter I had with them last year was so bad, I had to curse their boss in the office. I was going to Victoria Island that particular day, and I noticed some funny movement on my tire. So I had to park under the bridge at Adeniji. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. that place, They're approaching a VI from Todd Milan Bridge. Right. So before I even parked at all, they have surrounded me already. And I was trying to explain to them that normally I wouldn't park it. I just wanted to check my tires and be sure I'm safe on the road and all of that. They didn't even allow me to talk. And they just, okay, let's go to the office. They even wanted to tow my vehicle. I'm like, are you people normal? This is not a faulty car. So why do you want to tow my vehicle? So I had to follow them to their office. When I got to their office, I saw one of their bosses dressed me free. And I feel, okay, maybe this one we have sense. I should just talk to him. So I got to him, and the first thing he told me when I explained the situation was that, well, it is none of his concern. If I die, I die for my creator. Ah. I mean, at that point, I felt so bad. I didn't know when I said, could I need that for him, sir? I mean, I mean the, the, the point, the moment I said that, I told him, whatever the case is, whatever you want to write as bill or ticket, go ahead, do it right, right now. Write it, I'll go and pay. And I'll make sure that even call it hundred thousand, I'll pay it, and I'll come back and still tell you what I said earlier that could need that for me. So I paid the money, I came is that, back. Is it is it lack of professionalism in the or it's just a general Nigerian thing where people don't have empathy? 
they are just not yes nigeria has a problem of empathy but i feel these guys are just not the right people to fill those roles they are just mm -hmm. out speak from anywhere because they are supporting their rogues they are drug dealers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is the mm -hmm. point it's not as if, i mean there are people that are ready to work and are professional enough to handle situations like that when when they say people should not park on the road it doesn't mean they shouldn't park if they must park in that situation i must park and there's a time you have to as well listen even here right uh if uh if you have problem with your car on the highway there's hard shoulders okay and if you by any means that you can't get to the hard shoulders and you ended up having to still park on the highway that's why all those moving fast cars i bet you ah yes maybe in another 10 15 minutes you are going to see one of those patrol vehicles that will come first thing to guarantee your safety and say listen oh you need to leave that car yes. and move away from it they want to know is there any problem are you expecting is your car 40. nigeria wants your car park they will block you because the purpose is not because they want to protect the road users it is because not for your safety you. they just want to extort you to extort. that's all they want to do i mean uh we're we're all in lagos when somebody was there and the truth is he, i i feel that is one of the reasons somebody was even forced out he wasn't living to to the expectation of their their ecoe landlord mm -hmm. and the other if anything happens on the road when somebody was there in five minutes things have been cleared up and nobody is extorting anybody those people were sent back to their offices so I mean, they are just a bunch of idiots. Each each time you see these things, you just feel bad psychologically, mentally, and all. Anyway, that's about that. The other thing I wanted to call on was the issue of uh, Oni theory and all. I I think all the woman has been exposed in a way, but I still believe that people are not still opening their eyes to certain things, which I want to point our eyes to at this moment. The very the very first day I saw the lady. I told my girlfriend, I said, this is Tinobu's handwork. Hmm. Because if you are looking for intelligence, it's not there. Hmm. And if you if you check on our background, I'm someone that when I hear things, I don't just live on whatever you are saying. I try to check your background and all. If you check this lady's background, she's only a prostitute. Hmm. So at the end of the day, what Tinobu did with the lady was he needed something to rubbish the Yoruba nations campaign. Criminalize it. And Maybe that was that what he was it. able to achieve. And now you see that house they went to go and demolish in Ibadan. It's for a purpose. Now they will exactly. tell everybody in Yoruba land, if you rent your house or property to the self-determination people, government will demolish it too. Government will demolish it. If exactly. your child go exactly. join them in the advocacy for self-determination, government will arrest them. All. So this is going to be the new fear unlocked. Don't be so. so uh, of course, of course. Of course. I was actually coming there, but hmm. good you are talking about it already. Dami. I mean, if in, in developed countries and um, in same countries where things are running the right way, when things like that happen, demolishing the house is not the next thing. You could seize the house, use it as government, uh, I mean, use it for government agencies can, and all of these other things. No, you can't even do that. You have to, it has to be, no, the property can become a, a sort of uh, uh, a, a case of uh, sort of litigation, okay? To say, oh, the government believes that this property has been used for illegal this, this, and that. You will still have to give the owners of the property to fight it. You don't make declarations. Yes, yes. I mean, it. let them take it. No, you don't take people's property here. Onaja, Omo, now demolition, no. To send a warning. I mean, it's 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 just uh, Nigeria is all, it's just all over the place. And finally, because I want to allow other people to, sure, uh, you know, lend out their thoughts to. The, the country is, is such in a mess now that each time you're working, you're waking up, you're doing anything, it's not, it's not just about the government anymore. It's about the people. You feel endangered. Mm. People can't even think straight anymore. I saw the video of where they are giving bag of rice and they are praising their oppressors. I saw the video of where they are protecting uh, a, a popular team. Yaya Belu. I mean, what's wrong with these people? Why did God choose to create some of us same people among these animals? 
I feel so endangered every day. You can't even help Nigerians. If you help them, you you eventually regret. Little things they turn back at you, and you, you even get to I mean blame them, yourself for doing the right things. You, uh -huh. you will realize that they're actually taking all of their procession out on you until you feel like on you exactly you now. Exactly. Hmm. I was I was telling a friend recently that if you think people are running out of the country only for financial re reasons, then you are mad. You are you are in fact they, they are they are ignorant in it. More than mad, you come. Because hmm. What 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 uh, we are looking for is what we can where we can call home where there is comfort. Your mental health is safe. I mean, you're not scared of one agbero coming out from somewhere and just saying, "Bring your money for for not doing any work for you." I mean, he like just... was killed in the east. I think he was killed uh, in the east uh, yesterday because he didn't give bribe. But they just finished that the, guy. That guy is like in, in the truth is, name. like they just they just shot him. The truth is that that happens in Lagos almost every day. So every day. I mean, it, it, it happens almost every day. They might not kill him. They they will own you, spoil your car. You know, do it. they just have this free free hand? I mean, out everywhere in my area now. If you are bringing anything in, say you buy sound, your your contractors are bringing things in and all. You just see that once they get to the junction, they will call you that some people have taken them hostage and they wanted money. For what? They will say hey, they can't pass without paying them. If you pay them 1,000 naira, they won't collect you until you give them 5,000 naira. For carrying your own sand in your own vehicle, yeah. not that they are buying fuel for you or anything. You are talking about I mean, it's uh, just... a construction, I mean, as a construction uh, uh, stuff, right? I'm talking about yes, yes, people who yes. are like uh, they are targeting this one, they say. It's all those uh, lorries that we see coming from Apapa, passing through Lagos, and maybe going somewhere else and all that, right? People are now stopping them on the road. If you do mistake, go avoid the uh, expressway. In your way coming from Apapa, you can't enter one street, can't enter here or there. They buy in here. They can bill you like hundred thousand before your truck would. Mr. Michael, I am not. A, eh? I am not exag exaggerating. If you put too much load in your car uh, and you cannot close uh, your boots you pass those junctions now they will collect money from they you they will stop you and say oh yeah you have to pay you are carrying load i mean what you exactly is then the problem your house yeah you walk come out of your house you are expecting delivery something that normally back in the days eh, our boys are do good they will gather they help you take that thing inside help you set it do all with you know what i mean without asking for anything yes these days they will they will they won't help you carry anything no they will tell you that thing they cannot drop it here until they pay you until you pay until them. they pay exactly it's exactly like that. i'm mostly in lagos it's mostly just lagos. the country is just all over i do tell my friends if not for the job i'm doing here lagos is the list of places i want to stay it's not safe it, nothing is just okay in the states that's the truth and you just have to so, just like, uh, i mean fear of uh, what's going to happen and you have to be saying that uh, Really? What are they calling uh, what's it called? Standard of living, then if all of us have to be mad. You understand that's gonna be the standard of living. I said you won't live in Lagos, your money is not enough. Oh. You need to be mad. That's okay. How can I be mad? Don't worry, they will teach you after two months in Lagos. You're gonna learn how to be mad. You know, see, Dami, God bless you, man. Thanks for calling in tonight. Okay, it's really great. You're to welcome. You. Thank you. You are really, you are doing a really good job, and I just, I just pray that God will continue to help you, Jari. Amen. No, I need up, eh? mommy. You have a good one, okay? Um, yeah, Dami, good night, sir. Yeah. I, have so I just, I just pray that God will continue. To Hello there. Hello, good evening, my good. Good evening, sir. Well done. Baba. Yeah, this <laughs> you see, hey, fine. You see what is happening now in Nigeria. You see, um, the last time um Namdi Kanu went to court, he said the people that are causing this atrocity in the Igbo land, it has the hand of the government inside. He said it. Yes. So now you see, if there should be any other Yoruba nation agitator going on in Yoruba land now. If they see that this thing doesn't work, the next thing is you start seeing them 
shooting sporadically, killing people in Yoruba land. Mm. Because their aims and objective is to quench this Yoruba agitation, yeah, whatever. Like it's, it should be discontinued, discouraged. Yes, because, because if you follow the story very well, they wrote script for that Baba and that gay. Mm. And the script is, they make sure that how, what are the, what are the tactics that Yoruba agitators are using to move this message forward, to get this. So that gay mentioned, that Baba mentioned that they started giving them uh, flyers. Yes. Because that is what the, those that are agitating for this Yoruba or uh, in back home in Nigeria, in Yoruba land, that is the, the style they are using. So the Baba followed that. You, you can see that it's a script they wrote for that Baba and that gay. Then that gay now said, they said that we will be having freedom of freedom of this and that and uh, that. That that, that uh, they promised that that they will have exactly. good life, they good will have life. a job, and they would. I mean, yes. it was going to be better off once she participated. Exactly, exactly. It was a script. They gave it to them. Yes, they acted it. So, and the reason behind this is they wanted to stop. Then what happened again? Just on Thursday, they said they, they signed a uh, agreement it's with the Fulani. Agreement with Fulani. That, yet, yeah. that is a blank. That is a blank check. We we already gave blank check to the Fulanis. Hey, so now they can do whatever they want now. Hey, you will see what will happen after like, after like, are after we this expecting the yet, yeah, to help us stop. The Fulani terrorists from killing us, like Fulani Yetiala, to help us fight the Fulani terrorists coming to kidnap us or kill us. Like, uh, is that what the deal is about? Because I do not even understand the peace, peace agreement, peace Belangowo, peace with who? Exactly. And peace from what? So what they want now is they want to put stop to it. So if it doesn't end there now, then another tactics will be what they were doing in Igbo land. Mm. In the east, shooting, give them you say, that's say people you see. and call them unknown gunmen, but they will not call them unknown gunmen like they will say they are the Yoruba agitators called the on they will chat to exactly. it until it becomes exactly. realized. Wow, exactly, exactly, because they want to label Yoruba nation agitator violent and the way, and the, that. Name, mm. the way the name IPOB. That's what they were doing, they would just want to do now. You see, when um, this man in Ibadan, I don't want to mention his name, where Oriomi or whatever, exactly. I'm sad. We went to that second house. The guys they call him, those guys said they had they, they could find 10,000 wears of army uniform. Do you know how 10,000 wears of army uh -huh. uniform would 10,000 of army uniform? That's in that house. Production. I don't believe they had 10,000, right? Because I saw the bag of the uniforms they saw. But I could tell, you see, Baba, that's why somehow I felt like Oriyomi Amzat is also helping them in this regard to spread that misinformation. Exactly. To make it look exactly. Bad. But even though he's pretending to be like, uh, they said it's a, another faction, no? It's not the uh, faction of Igbo. So that yeah, it doesn't want to sound like want it's to, against it, them, it doesn't, you know? Yeah, it doesn't want to step on the toe of you Igbo. You get that. But making us believe that <laughs> it's so dangerous. Oh, look at what they are doing. Oh, they want to destroy Yoruba land. Oh, they want to, yeah, 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 and all of that stuff. Is helping them spread the narrative exactly, very exactly, very too. and that's very. Only is a, only your me and that is like citizen advice bureau in Yoruba land, right? Citizen advice bureau in that they were operating in UK here. That if you have problem, you don't want to Just take it to court. It. First, go to mm -hmm. citizen advisor office. That is what only your me is in the battle in Yoruba state. So it's working for. Mm -hmm. Now, so you see, you see, Oriomi program. He used to brought one old man to that uh, uh, his studio there. The old man said to him three days ago that they sold Nigerian, but to UAC at eight hundred and sixty-five thousand pounds. Yes, that man has history book that he used to roll. You know, the, it's an old man. It's not that old. It's it in is, his seventy. It, it, it is how much the UK, I mean, British uh, colonial government gave to. Uh, that that gold deal, you know, uh, to say okay, yes. you know, we are buying, we are buying the uh, Royal uh, Niger Company from you, and we are canceling your Royal Niger Charter. 
So it's now going exactly. to, it's going to be our business now. You take this. And he got his pay and he walked away. Exactly. And you you heard all this and you were you were not happy that we want to re, re, uh, yeah. we want to, to you know as I said, look at this man. So you were adding all this story and you are still surprised. Why do we want to break out of this yeah. contraction? Yeah. It shouldn't cut you as surprise. Yeah, oh, that is uh, the hypocrisy. And I understand see, oh, I do understand them because listen, Baba. Me, if I am in Nigeria, I may not be this vocal. I could have probably, and if I wanted to be this vocal, I could be in jail. But sometimes I just feel like, uh, you know, in the in the in the pretense of not wanting to have a face up with these guys in Nigeria, somebody like Oriyomi and Co trying to want to be smart and play smart. At the same time, you shouldn't use your own platform to mislead the people and give a very wrong impression people. about something that is so legit simply because these guys. I've done what they have done. That is my own ground. Exactly. But it is what it is. Yes. Also. Yes. Yes. My ego, Baba. keep going. We're, we're watching. Eh? We all are watching. <laughs> nice. And you must all know that we are all watching. The table will yes. turn. For now, yes. those who are kind of like uh, shaking the ground and telling us that, oh, yeah, nothing will happen. There are some of us who believe that the table will turn. When the table turns, this is exactly mm. what we want to happen then. All that we have designed. Exactly. Baba, exactly. thank you so exactly. much. Oh, let, me, let, let me tell you, do you yes. remember that? Yeah. That, day, that day they went to a go house. I didn't think that lady is not in that house. They would have said it's on his uh, ego against his uh, other, Actually. against other talk. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe other, maybe APC talk or PDP talk that we came to come and invade the go house. Now. And now they'll make Exactly. They would defend it. They won't have, yes, they won't accept it that they uh, is from they DSS or like that. They wanted to kill everybody in the house that night. Exactly. Because exactly. I remember how it happened that night, eh, Baba. Before you go, right? They brought in a guy who they believe is the local government chairman of that uh, Igbo was area yeah. in the battle. Okay. He was the one who Ooh. brought the DSS guys. So when they got outside, he personally was calling a boat to come out. We know that you are inside you. Mm. you know, but out. if you don't come out, we are going to have to come in. You know. But out. meanwhile, they were calling him. They brought another another uh, person who happened to be like a Baba Lao Baba. It's so funny. So that one was busy for like an hour in front of Ibo's house. He was making incantation. He was doing all of that. And they were say, they said they were making, they were neutralizing the Bobo inside. In all of this, eh, Igbo was on the phone with the leader of the DSS. This is so, so like, it was like, they were calling, they were calling him to, you know, come out, we are going to come in, we are going to come in. Then the next thing, no more, from nowhere, the guy who they said is local government chairman, he left. Uh, what do you call it? The Ababala, what they brought to the gates. That one left. Yeah. And just like that, as if they are, as they were leaving. This lady has already started the live broadcast dead. She, mm. Somebody just came and tell they came to tell them that uh, Omo, that lady is live. Oh. Mm. That lady is live. Oh. A video is live from the house. Oh. By then, Babalawo has left. Uh, this one has left, and they have they have made up their mind that uh, shoot anything that moves inside the house, anything that moves. Mm. But they are, they, you know, around that time, they, it was the time they told them that more um, everybody is already watching what is going on. No, what so they, they broke in, and the lady was screaming. They have broken. Oh, they have just shot so so person now. They have killed so 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 and so. They are going to break into my room soon. That was what's mm. everybody in the house that night. That's the only thing that saved everybody. If not, mm. uh, all of us will just wake up the following morning. Silence. And we we'll see dead bodies. And they will stay mm. those people, Igbo and others, they returned fire. They were shooting at them. That's why they, they killed them. So that uh, lady, lady, what is her name again? Lady, which lady, K. Lady, lady K. K. lady K. Lady K. I swear, Baba, that broadcast of that night was what saved the life of the rest of those people they picked up in the house. When they mm. killed that guy, they killed that Dugan. Eh? Mm. Baba. Even though the, the rumor was that they shot at him and the gun didn't enter. No, 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 they didn't shoot at him. The gun didn't enter. They held him, all right? 
and they did everything to break his head. They broke his head until he gave up. They didn't shoot him. It was mm. like that. They held him in the house like this, and they smashed his head. The only person shot is he goes, uh, you know, Matana uncle, uh, uncle, that other man oh, who, shot, that. who happened to be a car dealer. Mm. He was invited oh. to Igbo's house that night. That Igbo is around. Oh, yeah, come, let's talk about that business. So, and he was there oh, that night. God. That was the one they grabbed and they shot at him. They killed him. So they were, mm. they were going from room to room to kill everybody. Wow. Until they told them that uh, Igbo has escaped. Though we can't see him. He's not in the room. Ah, it's not okay. It's not okay. They became so enraged. And they started smashing all the cars in the compound. Everything in the place. Started firing everything everywhere. And they decided mm. to pack everybody in the house out. So they marched all of them from each room, marched them outside, lined them up, mm. including the two people they killed. So we would have woke up that morning, eh, and they would have said 15 people killed, including Igbo in his house. And they would say, Igbo opened fire on the DSS. What do you expect them to exactly. do? And they the propaganda would have went like that. Yes, exactly. I'll leave you Baba. Mm -hmm. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Carry on. Thank you. Right, right. Nice, Thank you. nice one. Mm -hmm. It was a very much terrible things that happened in that place that uh, sometimes I feel like uh, those who have died, they shouldn't die in vain. And those of you who are so hypocritical and selfish, you should never try to profit from the death of these people. No matter what you think they are offering you or the comfort you probably feel like, uh, you know, it is what it is. Hello there. Good evening, Mr. Mayogun. Thank you for good evening, sir. For all that, yeah, the, all that you are doing. There is a, a, a university of uh, of wisdom and exposition. <laughs> to the temple. Okay. Bless you, man. Okay. Yeah. Please, uh, I want to draw your attention back on the uh, a kind of uh, the genesis of this uh, very matter. Uh, I believe that this uh, democracy is my turn and the rest that uh, a lot of people are still being carried away. But what I want to really emphasize that when good luck was removed because of the when Boko Haram issue has started, that all our people still do not understand because they are still playing on tribe, they still believe in uh, democracy and so on. They never, they never understand that what we call one world, one world system that is being operated by the Western powers, that the new one world system, world order is to recolonize Africa with terrorism. So that is what going on. That people should not think that Nigeria is passing democracy. People should know that Nigeria has been taken by terrorism. And the people that agree that Nigeria should be taken by terrorism are the people that are in power. And that is why they throw good luck out. So when we see the Buhari, calamity we are experiencing, and it seems it's a mean to yes. end, Abby, like we are still going somewhere with all of this. So, hmm. yes. Yeah. So the people like Buhari, Erufai, Tinubu, and the Agan, APC, Akada People's Congress, and the crooked politicians from North, South, East, West, they all signed into this new world order. And that is what the Mali people, the Niger people, and Burkina Faso, that is what they rejected. Because those guys that took power from in those countries, those military guys, or the civilians that... Uh, help them those civilians knew what is going on because this thing exploded when they get rid of Gaddafi. so they knew and that is why the civilian population back their military to take power so that they're able to defend themselves because america the rest they don't they, they don't care what happened to our people is a kind of recolonization and if our people should go back and reflect what really happened to us during slavery what really happened to us during colonization that is what is happening right now because if we look at it that it is our own uh, brother there our sister there and so on they are in power they are not in power it's just that they agree that we should be recolonized that we should be sold away that everything every aspect of our life 
to be destroyed, that our land will be taken over. Even if the Fulani headsmen are black people, they are all members of Akeda and they signed into this one war system so that crisis will ruin the whole of Africa while these colonial powers continue to exploit Africa. When we are, when we are busy killing ourselves, when, when are we going to develop? When are we going to actually build anything competitive? That sounds so yes. right to me. Because this is, this okay. is not making any sense, though. Like brothers killing yes. brothers for what? Okay. So that 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 is what is on. And the only solution is that every person, man or woman, boy and girl, in that space, in that uh, uh, Nigeria yard, uh, this uh, crime scene, mm -hmm. they should know that these people are after their lives. It's just that they are using black people like us. They are after our lives because they want to take over the land so that they will continue to do exploitation. Okay, let me bring your mind back. Why is it that every time a new administration comes in, you still see the budget money to, re to repair the refinery. You still see the budget money for all kind of infrastructure. You know that this infrastructure is that the Western powers don't want any of those infrastructures to get on because if those if infrastructures are working, our uh, crude oil will be less dependent. Yeah, on we, yes, we will know what is happening to our crude oil. We, I spent five years working with them. Do you know that those facilities in the crude oil status is owned by foreign companies? Yeah. No Nigerian man mm -hmm. has any any to any facility that have to do with exploration of you know, Nigeria crude oil. I work with you there. Yeah, now, none of the technologies yes. is our own. Nigeria is oil producing. None of them. But now Shell, they drill the oil for them. Nigeria don't get machine yes. to any oil anywhere. Now, no, nothing. NAPC, nothing. DPRO, nothing. It's just that the oil belongs to the Western world. And every man that is thinking Nigeria have oil. Nigeria doesn't have oil. And the only thing that will make us to take it back is that we are going to fight. And people that are not ready to fight, even fight even our brothers that are in power, we are going to fight all of them. Because if we don't fight all of them, look at how it's going to end. They will take everything. And the people that are in Nigeria, they will not have a place to go. Because the country I am, if you see what is coming out from the mouth of the politicians, none of the African people will be welcome. So that is why that every person should wake up. They should do like Mali. They should do like Burkina Faso. We should do like uh, uh, Niger. Before it is the problem is the Western world doesn't want any good thing concerning black people, mostly in Africa. So if we don't get rid of it, we are all gone. Yeah. Because look at, look at, in Africa, that is the place we have our land. That is the place we have community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in this place we are, we don't have enough money to buy land. We, have land, we, we don't have, have a, a, enough money to buy. Mortgage. Even when we have mortgage, right? yes. the land is still not our own. It's not our own. So, it's a kind of... They, uh, they want we to have something that is connected to indigenous land of our own is that place that they want us to live. Yes. Hmm. Yes, yes. So it's like what happened during colonial time. They disinherited our people and they cut off from their ancestral land. So this time around, they want to disinherit us again and cut off from our ancestral land. We have to stop it. We have to stop it. Thank you. So thank you. That's my contribution. Oh, thank you. You. You, have you have spoken well. Yeah. Uh, you have a wonderful evening, mm. man. Thank you so much. Even Listen, um, he called me and I was on YouTube and about 100 of us on his list. I mean, left on Facebook. It's what's available. Okay, if you want to talk about it, you can find a good life. I mean, on Facebook, you can do comments. It's on Instagram. It's that part. I don't know there are updates that it's also discouraging. It's also very good. I don't know what you want. Share, like, you know, subscribe, and all the stuff. Comment, as you can, all of them. So, I know what you see instead. Why you really help your friend? Don't make you like the brother. Because I'm not here for money. All right?
Hello, excuse me, what do you mean by offering? Are you getting money from Pillars of the Media? This one again. Tell us about that. All the people on YouTube. I don't get that. What do you mean by offering? Are you collecting? Are you going to collect Pillars of the Media? Are you going to collect Pillars of the Media? That's what I'm offering. I'm offering to that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Chai. Now, wow, people were supposed to talk through to power down of mind. And if we talk, now 500,000 they go summer house, call them hate speech. But fear not, my ego don't come. Ingo touch light every corner, nooks and cranny of all these bad bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make me love Go, yeah, yeah. This one, not the off. 
Person talk, hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk? He do they talk? Say my egun diary, he dey hot like pepper. But every day, then they take money in buck. Woman begin dey the street dey hawk. Still them talk say make we no talk, but thank God say my egun don't come. So my people make you laugh. Oh yeah yeah, my egun don't come. Oh yeah yeah, my people make you shout. Oh yeah yeah. This man not the off in mind. Aha! Now you mona don't hear you. all these bad bad politicians. Then we call themselves politicians. When they thief our money, when no one to make the common man get what he's supposed to get for this country. Mona never hear something. Now go hear one. My ego, you go show on a paper. My ego, now I'm all I'm on to do do do.